Craig Smoke. All right, the, the linebacker position, and every program has different names that they call the hybrid. There's the star, there's the jack, there's all sorts of other names that certain programs use. Some of them use the same one. Caleb Collins took over as linebacker's coach when Joey McGuire took the job as head coach at Texas Tech, and we've heard nothing but great things about him. And the uh, linebacker play actually seemed to get better or more consistent. And now they have a new wave because Bernard's gone. But they have Doyle, Jones, among some others. Side linebacker's coach. He coaches the jack spot. Um, and Roberts. Roberts coaches the Terrell Bernards and, and you know, or the, uh, the Dylan Doyles, certainly, uh, being a you know, inside guy. But, yeah, he's the outside linebacker's coach or the jack spot. And, you know, Joey McGuire decides he's got to go recruit in the middle of the season uh, for Texas Tech and take that job when he did and, you know, left them in a little bit of a lurch, but I think they might have actually upgraded. And, and I, I'm not trying to disparage Joey McGuire before everybody goes crazy, but did y'all see a drop off? No, no, there was no drop off. If anything, they actually played pretty dadgum well down the stretch. His first game was the Oklahoma game as a coach. They, they handled Oklahoma pretty well. I know Lincoln had distractions and whatnot, but I mean, you go and you look at the Sugar Bowl, 10 sacks in that game, and a good portion of them were from the Jack linebackers. You know, you had Matt Jones there, Garmin Randolph there. Uh, as you'll hear, Garmin Randolph's injured right now. And Matt Jones, I think it's kind of in the middle of, uh, of them trying to figure out what to do with him because he can play multiple positions, but... Um, you know, they uh, now have Josh White. And so if Josh White comes in when he comes in, you know, how does that affect sort of, you know, what they do with the group? So until Josh White's on campus, we don't have the full picture, although we can kind of start guessing. But uh, Caleb Collins is, is mightily impressive. He's one of the best interviews that we've heard all spring. A super young coach who's really just getting started. And, I mean, how could you have a better, you know, uh, pair of of mentors than Dave Aranda and Ron Roberts I mean to have played for Roberts and now to be co phone call and little did he know he would be you know jumping onto the LSU staff and winning a national championship and then just a couple of years after that you know becoming a position coach for the first time so it's been a wild ride in a short amount of time for him but he's a bright star on the come up that's for sure all right well you're about to go to practice because there's an open media session at the start of practice and then audio video with players and a coach afterwards. So Craig's going to take out, uh, go to practice. We'll hear from Mac Rhodes, of course, in the next segment. But speaking of the outside linebackers, Coach Caleb Collins, he was one who met yesterday with the media. Coach, uh, how's the group looking? Are, are they progressing like you're hoping? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. With, uh, you know, some of the injuries to Garmin, it's opened up the door for Tony and, and uh, Jackie Marshall to get a lot more reps, Victor Obi. Uh, so, yeah, man, just excited. I mean, you know, those guys are really progressing and taking advantage of the opportunity that's in front of them. Caleb, yeah. what was that opportunity like for you at the end of last year? I mean, after Joey left, just to kind of step in there and take over that spot? Uh, man, it was crazy because, you know, I just thank God because I definitely felt prepared. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I didn't really feel like, man, I don't know what I would do. And especially with it being Oklahoma week, uh, you know, I just started with first asking Coach McGuire, like, hey, you know, what's the feel for the room? And uh, after that, I just, you know, met with those guys, you know, and a lot of them I knew I had worked with Garmin when I was working with Coach Dennis Johnson with the D-line. Um, so I worked with Garmin. I had worked with Matt. Um, so, you know, it was kind of like I stepped into the room. And like I said, the vibe and the feeling, those guys loved each other. So it was it was awesome. But as far as like me, myself, I just felt like, hey, I've been around great coaches for a long time with, you know, playing for Coach Roberts and GA and for Coach Aranda. So I just felt like, you know, just this is what you've been preparing for. Just make the most of it. You know, put a good product out on the field and don't let the team down. And really, what a great time to come in because you got to coach a Big 12 championship game, yeah. Sugar Bowl. I yeah. mean, that had to be some really good experience. For oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, being in a box during a Big 12 championship. Like, man, this is crazy. Like, I'm about to walk into a Big 12 championship. Like, like that first half, it seemed like couldn't nothing go wrong. I mean, you know, we 17 for 17. Like, defense got three picks. I'm like, oh, man, I'm like, man, my first game, I'm going to walk into a Big 12 championship. And then that second half, I was like, see, this is the real. I was like, this is, this is what it's really like. I mean, you know. But, I mean, you know, shoot, that fourth down stop, man, I was like, wow. Yeah. I was like, well, I was like, this is the best experience ever. Yeah. yeah, and then the way they played in the Sugar Bowl. I yeah, really yeah, cool ten too. sacks, man, ten sacks, yeah. and just proud of them guys because, uh, you know, a lot of the game plan was really on the the F position and the Jacks being able to really two gap on the edge, and man, they just bought into it. Matt uh, Garmin. 
they really just bought into the technique we was teaching and it showed up big time. I mean, they had multiple tackles and TFLs just from being able to play primary to secondary. So that was huge. Actually, most of, most of like the clinic talks I've done uh, this off season, I've talked about that. I've talked about just that technique and how it showed up late in the season. Yeah. I think Coach Robert said, did Tony get hurt during camp or something last year? Oh, uh, yes, 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 or? yes, yeah. Right before the season started last yeah, year. He, he said uh, he was kind of in position to yeah, yeah, really yeah. play. Yeah, he was, he, was in, he was in a prime position. And, um, you know, even talking with him as he came back later in the year, yeah. he was just saying, like, you know, hey, you know, I don't really know if I could go full speed on it. So that's been one of the things I think he's just been most grateful for and thankful for. Uh, this spring ball is like getting back to full speed kind of picking up where he left off and it showed, you know, he's he's playing pretty hard right now and you know he's he's putting it all out there. Okay. Yeah, he's been running with the with the, with the with the one group uh most of spring ball, you know, with Garmin's injury and he's been taking advantage of the opportunity. Yeah, what what's Garmin's deal? Uh first so first he got his wisdom teeth removed. So he went through like the first week of spring okay. ball, got his wisdom teeth removed. First practice came out flying around, got the biggest smile on his face, making plays, and in 907 he fractures his hand. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, it's just one of those deals where not requiring surgery, so uh, they keeping him out, uh, but uh, they don't want him to bang it and then the bone kind of shifts. Okay. So they just want the bone, I guess, to fuse. And so I think he'll be back. Uh, able to do some contact the week of the spring game, but okay. you know, but he's still in it. He's being a leader. Uh, he's in meetings. Uh, you know, really being vocal. And you know, during a scrimmage last week, I think uh, you know Tony and Jackie made a play earlier, made a mistake early, and you know, it was just like, hey, you know, them being young guys having to understand, hey, I got to move on to the next play. And he was really a big advocate in saying, like, hey, it happens all the time. Keep playing. And it, it showed up because they was able to finish the scrimmage off strong instead of just letting that one play you know, turn into a momentum, a snowball effect. I was trying to remember, is Jackie a walk-on or is he an actual uh, he a scholarship? Yeah, Jackie is a scholarship player. Yeah, he is a scholarship player. When did he player. come in? He came in uh, after fall camp last year. Last year. Yes, okay. sir. Yep, he came in after fall camp from uh, Louisiana. Yep. Okay. Yeah. What do you see from him? What Man, explosive as can be. He's like a freaking rolling ball of butcher knives. Like he, he, it's like for him to be that big and to move as well as he does, and like such twitch. It's like he shouldn't be able to do that, but he does. So uh, the main thing that I've really learned from him this spring is the more reps he gets, the better player. I mean, the better he is because with him, it's all just um, knowing what what we're doing. Uh, getting better at how we're doing it, but it's like, like I say, the more comfortable he feels, the more and more he's just making plays. He's a very productive player. He just has to, you know, continue to learn the system. I think those weights must be a little off. That. Oh yeah, the, no, yeah, yeah. I think on the scale, I don't know what it's like. Two thirty-five. Yeah, nah. He's like two fifty, two sixty. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, he's a big guy. Yeah, he's a big guy. But you solid though. Way into end or? Um, nah, I hope not. Yeah, I hope you not. want him there. Yeah, hey, I want him at Jack. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but uh, like I say, the more, the more reps he's getting, the better player he's becoming. And uh, like I say, he's just taking advantage of the opportunity in front of him this spring. Yeah, so it's just exciting time, man. I was, I remember it was a time during, um, you know, when we was lifting weights and just looking at them dudes. I'm like, man, like I'm blessed. Like, you know, you got Victor Obi, you got freaking Garmin Randolph, you got Jackie, you got Tony, you got Will Garner. I'm like. Prince, I'm like, man, look at these dudes. And then you got Bryson. You know, Bryson is uh, probably our best returning pass rusher. So it's like, I'm like, come on, man. It don't get much better than this. Is he double training some inside? Yeah, he's probably training some inside, you know. And it's, it's helping him. It's really helping him just get the whole picture, yeah. you know. Instead of him just being a pass rush guy, we will be able to utilize, utilize him more on third downs. Like, okay, now we're showing him here, like, you know. Because he's going to be the main guy with him being the best returning pass rusher. He's going to probably be the main guy that people are looking at next year. Like, okay, just block him. Like, right. if we can block him, we probably could work out the rest, you know, so. You talked about it a little bit, but how comfortable are you with, like you said, you played for Ron, mm -hmm. you were a GA with Dave. I mean, how yeah. comfortable are you in that role, I guess? Man, really comfortable, and I really appreciate, uh, you know, I just feel like sometimes, like, Coach Roberts really helps me out a lot by just telling me the real, like, you know, hey, like, you know, hey, this is what we need to work on. Like, you know, these are the techniques I think you should, you know, kind of introduce to the group. And, you know, he doesn't really hold back any of that, like, you know, thinking I got an ego or none of that, because it's like, well, I played for him, so. And then, like I say, with Coach Aranda, just soaking it all up. I mean, as this GA, I felt like, man, like, this is crazy. I went from, um, I went from coaching 
you know, my B team basketball to, you know, I got a call from Coach Roberts saying Coach Randall's looking for a GA. And I'm like, what? Like, and I, you know, I, so I left high school ball and went to LSU. And I'm, I just remember the first day pulling up, like, that's Tiger Stadium. And I remember, like, I'm sitting at my little GA desk and I see a playbook that say Young on it. It's like LSU defense. I'm like, I'm like, man, this can't be happening right now. So, and I still never really lost that, that little aura. Like, man, I'm still working with. Ron Roberts and Dave Aranda, and my first full-time job as a Tazan left. Caleb. Anybody there? Caleb Collins, uh, the outside linebackers coach. That's from yesterday. Appreciate his time. And, again, you hear a lot of great things about him. And, and he's got a pretty good group, young, raw group in many ways. And, Craig, again, there's an article, Sikkim365.com, in the premium section.